golden gift to the new republic was brought home to Trinidad and Tobago by champion of the 100 meter final in the 1976 Montreal Olympic Games, Hazley Crawford of Trinidad. It was the first Olympic goal for Trinidad and Tobago and the young shy runner from the southern capital of the city of San Fernando was given a welcome home that he so richly deserved and that he would not soon forget. The rest of the Trinidad contingent to the games were there to share in the glory as the Prime Minister expressed the sentiments of the thousands present. It almost looks like the entire population of Trinidad and Tobago have come out here tonight to pay tribute to our great Trinidad hero, Mr. Hazley Crawford. <laughs> and fittingly also, to the Trinidad and Tobago contingent to the Montreal Olympics and their officials, their manager, because it takes more than one person to make a team. Mr. Crawford is going to have a lot of speechifying to do in the next few days and would have a lot of speeches thrown at him in the next few days. I want him to know that this is a proper occasion in terms of the sporting community of Trinidad and Tobago to make two or three basic statements of concern to sport in Trinidad and therefore to Mr. Hazley Crawford. The first point is this. If Mr. Hazley Crawford has any ideas about returning to Trinidad and Tobago to live and to work and to inspire the younger people here, you will find a lot of people ready to discuss with him the propositions. A few, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity of meeting through someone who was sent here of the United States of America, an astronaut who was about the place promoting the United States of America. Trinidad and Tobago can't send an astronaut to promote. We could send a man that no astronaut can catch because he can't go back to A gold medal in the 100 meters in the Olympic Games. Away they go, a beautiful start by Crawford, a good start by Quarry and Bordov also. Dieter from from West Germany looking from East Germany looking strong here. Glantz going well. And at this stage, Crawford only slightly ahead. And we're all waiting for the promise of the three middle runners, Borzov, Quarry, and Glantz. But Crawford is still there. Quarry coming on strongly now as Crawford continues to hold his form beautifully. And Quarry's lean at the tape can't get there. Crawford, Quarry, Borzov leaning for third. And Glantz in fourth place in a superb race with all the runners separated by no more than three and a half to four meters. Magnificent as Crawford walks back, now with the fuller realization that the gold medal is his. Dr. William, colleagues, um, my, my, my supporters, friends, and family. Let me say at this point, I am very happy to be a Trinidadian today. I'm very much surprised of the reception I'm getting here. Um, let me say that I am happy. Let me thank the, um, the Prime Minister for helping me in my, in my preparation. I hope what I have done last week will be an inspiration to the younger kids. And also, I hope that the government will look at what I have done. And I, I think that if I can do it, others can do it too. I hope it's going to be an inspiration so that we, the government will give us a stadium so we can produce more. Here's the Crawford. To show my appreciation, I would like to present my gold medal running shoes to the Prime Minister and also to the public of Trinidad and Tobago. Way to a very good start. Smooth pickup by Crawford. Easily the class of this particular heat, running very powerfully. He's a big man, six feet one and 165 pounds. Impressively through his pickup phase, accelerating up for about six seconds. 
and now in complete command as he moves through the final 30 or 40 meters to take this first round heat very easily. Crawford extremely impressive on the Olympic Games training track just over a week ago when he ran 10 seconds even for the 100 meters. And here, striding away with a comfortable three meter lead, now just glancing around to see that everything's under control and he's qualifying without any... The occasion could not be more propitious. The New Republic was not quite a day old when Crawford arrived home from his Montreal success. The next day marked Discovery Day, a holiday, and the motorcade taking the Olympic gold medalist into the capital city of Port of Spain had to make its way slowly through the vast crowds gathered to welcome home the fastest man in the world. Paisley Crawford, and in lane number eight, Lambert Misha of Belgium. The first three in each heat. Again, we see that lane six appears to be empty, and this comes as quite a surprise, Jeff. Uh, we don't understand at all what has happened to Martin. We had no advance information that Martin was going to scratch. As far as we knew, as late as last evening, he was running in this first heat. No information at all. I was speaking to Gerard Mack in the village just two days ago, and uh, he only spoke to me about Hugh Fraser's injury. Uh, it will be remembered, however, that in the first Olympic trials in Quebec City, Martin did pull a leg muscle in the 200, and it may be that this has been bothering him. However, the race goes on without him. So lane six is empty with Bob Martin of Canada scratched from this very first heat in the 100. Set. Paisley Crawford of Trinidad, one of the finalists in Munich, running very well out in lane number seven. Crawford, in a pre-Olympic warm-up, had a very easy 10-1 clocking, and his time here is 10.42. It appeared as though Caravani of Italy and theme of East Germany finished in second and third spots. The first three and the five fastest losers will advance to the next round, but there wasn't much doubt that Paisley Crawford of Trinidad, who was injured in the final in Munich in 1972, had this one. In this third heat, in the second round, we have the defending Olympic champion, Val Revozov, running in lane six. But let's begin with lane one in setting the field for you. Second, not a particularly charming view of Hazley Crawford. He had a time of 10.42 seconds this morning. Amadou is running in lane two. Klaus Bieler of Germany in three. De Silva of Brazil is in four. Michael Sands of the Bahamas is running in lane five. And then Valerie Borza, Adama Fall of Senegal, and Andrzej Swinerski of Poland completes the field. Paisley Crawford looked extremely convincing this morning, and I think he's going to be a man to watch through into the final. Borzov will receive his second test, as we said earlier, and Andrzej Swazinski of Poland is another man, I think, to watch in this race, although we have had one or two surprises already by lesser-known athletes running very well indeed, and certainly the Bahamian Sands and the Silver of Brazil, who's a fast starter, will need to be watched in lanes four and five. Well, lane five is vacant. Sands of the Bahamas has scratched. For what reason, we are not sure. Borzov attempting to become the first ever to defend a sprint double. And the double gun indicates a false start. This morning, we pointed out that they have pressure-sensitized plates to detect any false starts or any athlete trying to roll into a start, anticipating the gun. And the recall pistol brings them back to the starting line once again. And that start was extremely difficult to detect. The culprit was difficult to find, and it may be that we've seen one of the first examples of the starting blocks working with the signal going to the officials so that they fired the recall gun. It will be interesting to see if we can detect whether one of the blue lights goes on as a warning light. I believe it's 
Beeler of Germany in lane three charged with the false start. Hazley Crawford of Trinidad delighted many of the spectators at the Olympic training track about eight, nine days ago. He had a clocking of 10-1 and looked very comfortable in doing so in a pre-Olympic meet. He ran in the 72 final in Munich, but was injured. He did not finish the race. He pulled up. Valerie Borzov, the defending gold medalist over the 100 meter distance. He's in lane six. Crawford in the inside, along with Amadou, running very smoothly, now making his move in the outside, very easily coasting into second spot is Borzov. There was some conjecture about a month ago that Borzov was not fit, that he was not in good form. Through the first round this morning and through this second round this afternoon, he looks very, very good. So does this man, the winner, Hazley Crawford. Last stop, last stop. Good start on the second attempt. Crawford getting away well and picking up well. Borzov getting his usual good start also in the middle. And Crawford in command on the inside at this stage in the race going at the 40 meter mark. Amadou also close to Crawford, only about one meter back. And now in lane six, Valerie Borzov beginning to pour on the power. He's a very, very foxy competitor, an extremely experienced competitor. And there must still be doubts in the minds of his adversaries as to just how fit he is because once again glancing around seeing how much he needs to do in order to come safely through this second round moving convincingly into the third position now taking Amadou in the last few meters Crawford also checking to see how things are Borzov beginning his lead in to qualify easily in second place behind Crawford with Amadou third <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago had been knocking at the Golden Gate since the 1948 London Olympics when Rodney Wilkes won a silver medal in weightlifting. In 1952, Wilkes and Lennox Kilgore brought home bronze medals from Helsinki. And by 1964, Tokyo, our mark was being made in the track events with bronze in the 200 meters, silver in the 400, and bronze again in the 4 by 400 meter relay. Aisley Crawford's goal is the apogee in this string of successes for our country. We're live again at Olympic Stadium and they're just introducing the eight runners in this second semi-final. Petrov of Bulgaria is running in six. Hazley Crawford of Trinidad, one of the favorites, is in seven. And Aksinen of the Soviet Union is in eight. Donald Quarry is running in five. Amadou of the Ivory Coast is in four. John Jones of the U.S. in three. Stephen Riddick of the United States is in two. Alexander Thiem of East Germany is in lane one. Many people feel that Donald Quarry of Jamaica, who has dominated the Pan Am Games and the Commonwealth Games over the past six years, has an excellent chance of progressing through this and to a solid medal position in the final. However, he's going to get quite a run from Riddick in two and Jones in lane three. Riddick takes a little time to get moving. On the outside, Hazley Crawford is running well. Quarry trying to make up ground. The two Americans, the four of them are almost at the tape at the same time. 10.19, Hazley Crawford was the winner. And then it was a toss up. Donald Quarry, Jones, and Riddick. But the winner was Hazley Crawford. He did not finish the 1972 final in Munich as the result of an injury. He picked up a silver medal in the Pan Am Games with a 10.2 clocking. He was very impressive, as we told you yesterday, about 10 days ago, in pre-Olympic competition on the training track here in Montreal. And he appears determined to make up for that problem in Munich four years ago. Hazley Crawford looked very, very good in winning this semifinal in 10.19 seconds. Crawford? in with a chance at Munich in 1972. After vigorous training which took him to the peak of his form, had pulled up lame in the 100 meter finals. He waited for four long years to compete again 
and was not to be denied his eventual victory. Away to a good start, first time, as expected. Crawford, who doesn't really have a weak part to his race at all, running well from the early stages. And we would look for Quarry and Riddick, who are fast, late finishers, to come on strong in the later part of the race. And so it seems to be. Crawford nicely placed at the moment. Axinin, the small Russian, not getting away to the fast start that the small man must have. And now both Jones and Riddick and Quarry coming strongly to challenge the ascendancy of Crawford. And it's Jones who's holding Riddick at this stage. Quarry coming through very strongly. Crawford, however, retaining the advantage again in the finish and having time to look across to see where the others are. And in fact, Riddick may not have made it. Riddick may have been displaced. Physical preparation is now over. The last minute mental rehearsal of the final is taking place in the minds of these eight athletes. How to react to the starting gun, what the early phases of this race will be, exactly what they're going to do. To rehearse of all this now that the physical effort and warm-up is over, and they will shortly be called to their marks to settle in, check their feet and hand placings. Listen for the sound, set, rising up, stealing their muscles, ready to explode away, running away, full range from their blocks in response to the starter signal. A lot of people have questioned and had questioned the physical prowess of Valerie Borza, whether he was fit indeed. Some are still unconvinced as to whether he has really recovered from that injury, the way he has almost disdainfully run through the heats, the second round, and then the semi-final. Glancing at his opponents after about three or four strides out of the box. The world and Olympic record, 9.9 seconds. Established, of course, in 1968. There's Casey Crawford of Trinidad, and that's his habit to turn his back to the finish line. Petrov of Bulgaria is running in lane two. In lane three, the gold medalist, the defender from 72, Valerie Borza, Donald Quarry of Jamaica, the dominant figure in Commonwealth and Pan Am Games competition, Harvey Glantz of the United States, John Jones of the United States, who probably considers himself very fortunate to be here, Dieter Kurat of Germany, and Gay Abraham, something of a surprise from Panama. We would expect to see good starts from Glantz and the fast-moving Dieter Currat of DDR mark. and a totally sound race from Borzov, but now this is it. This is the time of tension. This is the true test. Valerie Borzov in lane three, Quarry in four, Glantz in lane five. Borzov with the ability to accelerate, with the ability to shift gears after moving about 50 meters down the track. Let's listen to the starter's instructions. Set. Glance away very quickly. Borzov trying to move up. Quarry's going with him on the inside. It's Hanley Crawford. Crawford's going to be there. He's got the yes. gold. Yes! Quarry's got the silver and Borzov got the bronze. Hazley Crawford of Trinidad who fell and was injured in 1972 doing a victory lap on the track. He has won the gold medal with a time of 10 points. from this capacity crowd here at the Olympic Stadium. He surprised a lot of people. No one had really given him the credit he deserved, but we sensed that perhaps he was going to come through after his performance on the training track about 10 days ago. He seemed to run so easily there. He was injured in Munich in 72, and now it must be a moment of just complete relaxation and sheer joy for Hazley Crawford. The full realization, I am the Olympic 100-meter champion. Magnificent running by this strong Trinidadian. Superb run from start to finish. 
to take this gold medal in 10.05. He can't quite realize it. All in all, a tumultuous welcome home for the first Olympic gold medalist of Trinidad and Tobago. And the country looks forward to greater achievement at Moscow in 1980. The sprint champion of the world in 1976, the gold medalist here at the Montreal Olympic Games. And you know, in one of the biographical sketches he did for us, he said one of his favorite hobbies is drinking. He said, if the mental thing, the hangover hurts you only as much as you think it will, I would suggest that he may do a little celebrating this evening. He could well just drink a little bit tonight to celebrate this supreme run in today's 100-meter final. Hazley Crawford of Trinidad, a very, very fine run, a worthy victor. We're looking at the three fastest men in the world in these 1976 Olympic Games. On the left is Donald Quarry, on the right, the defending champion from 1972, but the champion for 1976, the gold medalist, 25-year-old Hazley Crawford, of Trinidad. He's been going to school in the United States and a lot of people I don't think really believe that he was capable of winning the gold. However, he was as fit as possible coming into these games, which he demonstrated about 10 days ago and then convincingly asserted again this afternoon. Second, Donald Quarry. Donald if he had Jimmy. another stride or two, perhaps would have caught him. He just missed. He finished in second spot and now must be stamped, I would think, as a clear favorite over 200 meters, Jeff. I think that's true, too. And I think it was even less than a stride or two, Don. In fact, it was two hundredths of a second was the difference between gold and silver. Third. Valerie Borzov, unsuccessful also. in his bid to become the first ever to defend a sprint championship. And for the first time since 1928, the Americans failed to be involved in the medal presentation. Lord Kalanen presenting the medals to champion Hazley Cropper. Silver to Donald Quarry and bronze to Valerie Borzov. Now the national anthem of Trinidad. Proud moment for Hazley Crawford. What a hero he'll be when he returns home to his native island.